Hello and welcome to this edition of A Conversation With. I'm Jim Marshall of the New Bedford Cable Network and joining us in studio, a return visit, it's that time of year, Major Michael Jung of the Salvation Army of Greater New Bedford. It's good to see you again, my friend. Thank you. Thank you Been Jim. a busy time. Yes. You know, I, I watched yes, uh, yesterday, I was watching the show we did last year. And as I was saying to you just a second ago, I don't think the issues have changed, but yep. um, the last 12 months have been, you know, the same. Yep. Um, you're dealing with a lot of things going on and, and uh, kudos to you because you and your staff do tremendous work and uh, take care of a lot of folks and it's it's appreciated for sure thank you what is you, you know as we look at the last 12 months and you were you know like i said you came in last year and we talked mm -hmm. how has the last 12 months been for you and, and the organization i think of uh, the last 12 months we finally became more stable okay you know and to, uh, before that, 22 months, the first year of COVID, people were, they needed food. I mean, there was this big rush, people coming out. So we served at that time about 800 families every week. Wow. Now we're down to 150, which is not a bad thing. They stabilized, but there's other organizations that have stepped up to help them. So people are not going without, they just, it just uh, they're being more cautious. So there's no this crowd coming in. Mm -hmm. but more let me find a place where I can be safe you I mean a lot of people think of you obviously the neediest family fund during the Christmas time obviously you're a 24 7 12 months of the year organization Absolutely. has the demand for uh, I mean I don't even know uh, how to say it in a sense where the needs that people have have, have they increased for you and in that there's more things that you have to provide I think um, there's been more need, even with the neediest family fund compared to last year yeah. versus this year, more people are coming out for help compared to last year where they're being cautious because of COVID. Right. Now they're saying, I need help, will you help us? Do they need more things than what you're- what I don't you know if it's more things, yeah. but there is a need for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as you said, uh, I mean, the last year was a lot of food. And I know we had Michelle Hantman from the United Way on talking about the, the food pantry yep. earlier. But you do the food pantry, too. As well, yeah. And obviously there's coordination between all the organizations there in the is. city. There is. I don't think people understand that either. No, we all work together. We're, we're a team together. We, I mean, there's a council of us coming together to talk about those things and what the needs are. So it's not... Um, okay, this guy's on here and this person's over here. We're working together to serve in the greater community here, so. And uh, you know, one thing, I, and, and I asked you off c at camera, and I think it's a good point too. Yep. You represent, um, your organization handles Greater New Bedford. Yes. And for folks that don't know, what are those communities that you're looking so at? So we look at uh, New Bedford for sure, right. uh, Fairhaven, Dartmouth, Freetown, and Acushnet area. And it, it, you were mentioning too, in the holiday season, you go uh, all go, the way to Wareham, actually. We go to Wareham, Mattapoisett, and Marion. Right. So there's a lot of, um, do you notice that even in the smaller towns, that there's, there's a still a need? There's still a need. I think there's a new need. Really? Meaning that there are people who didn't have a need before are needing now. Uh, I was talking all off camera, we we're talking about how some of our volunteers are coming out for help now seeking help and that must th th that's in a sense really mind-blowing in a sense where how much the last 22 months have changed I mean yep. you really wouldn't think of that yeah and we were talking about uh, off camera too which I think is interesting and, and you sort of re-emphasize it too um, I want to say the middle class there yes. are people who you know before COVID were doing okay no, we and there are still people who are working and doing okay but yep. the cost of things yeah has gone up. Is pricing people out. Yes, it is. And you know, getting toys this year was difficult because one, the price went up or they're out of stock. You know, so those two things have caused us to look, trying to find more vendors to help us and more uh, source resources to be able to supply the demand that, that's out there. I don't think people would gather too when they talk about the supply chain issues that yep. and they've been in the news. It's actually all over the world. Yep. But that yes, the local you in your organization that impacts you directly. That's right. That's right. 
that's scary. It does. Um, so, how, so, you know, you were talking last time that you guys were, you know, really had a good plan of attack and were, were executing as best you can. And you said things have stabilized too. Are you pleased with the way that the execution of services and stuff that you had done got better, I'm sure? Last year, we were being very conservative yeah. because of the whole COVID thing. Right. This year, we, because we recognize the need is greater, so we have decided to change it up a little bit. So last year, we, what we did was we uh, signed people up on Mondays for the, the Neediest Family Fund, mm -hmm. and we had the toys given out by Friday. This year, we're doing a one-stop shop, meaning they come in, they sign up, we verify them, they get their gift card, they get to go to the toy shop right away. So they don't have to return back again so that they have the things ready for the children. And we're looking at if it's, if it's their last days. You just don't know today's times when's the last day for anybody. And the answer is that, you, as you were saying too, I mean, it's not just the gift cards. You're, you're providing food, food, you're providing- Toys. Uh, winter coats, you were winter saying. Winter coats, yes. So we're providing coats as well, you know, and that's a challenge, trying to find coats at this time. Right. Um, the one thing I saw, uh, you know, nationally, and, and you can probably talk to it on the local level was, um, there was an issue, they were saying donations were okay nationally, yep. the organization, but it was the product, whether it be food or clothing or toys, it was the product that seemed to be a problem, uh, again, on the national level. Yep. Are you finding that too? We're finding that also, it's hard to find these products or the price is higher cost at the time. I was gonna say, so from the food aspect, for example, yep. um, you know, the staples, you know, milk. It's, uh, it's Price is higher, right? You know, I can't give you exact numbers. No, no, but, I know. Yeah, but we're getting less product for the same amount of money. So, uh, have you had to? I don't say ration is the word, but do you have to uh, look at the the size of the food that uh, the, the we, bulk of food that you give to folks? Absolutely, and also the need is greater. So, two years ago, before COVID hit, we were serving doing the food pantry twice a week. I mean, once every two weeks. Uh -huh. This now we're doing it every single week, and so we have to make sure we have enough food for every week to be passed out. The other thing, and I, th I think, is a good point to make. Again, we talked about this last year. It's not just getting food; it's getting the right food. The right food, absolutely. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, when you talk about giving food, you're not talking about just well, you know, whatever the donation is. You're looking for a Particular things, healthy things, really. We're looking for healthy things. We're also looking at, talk is diversity, inclusion, and all that stuff right now. We, we want to make sure that people of different cultures get the right food. You know, some people eat more rice. Some people eat more bread, you know, depending on the culture. Some mm -hmm. people eat more potatoes, you know. So we have to make sure that we're meeting the need of that individual by providing them the right food. And as you said, that's, that is the challenge right now because even the cost of the different ethnicities, yep. those foods are going up as well. That's right. We were talking to Major Michael Jung of the Salvation Army here at Greater New Bedford. He's uh, kind enough to come in at the busy time of year here. One thing I saw too, uh, a story, is the um, uh, kettle drive. Yes. Um, which is always, and I don't know how much percentage-wise the kettle drive brings in, but it's a staple during the holidays. Absolutely. And it's hard to get, and again, it's COVID-related. It is. Tell us a little bit it's about COVID that. It's COVID-related in a couple things. One, we're not getting enough workers out there workers or volunteers and again you're you you said too and because I, I asked you to yep. clarify you're talking people who you would pay to work for yep. the salvation army who are in need of resource financial resources to be able to provide for their family to catch up on bills uh to catch up on whatever it is um not enough there's job openings yeah there's job openings and wh so we're not even talking your volunteer staff not talking about volunteer staff right the day-to-day -day workers that will go out Monday through Saturday on a regular basis to stand at the kettles so that we can uh, raise that money. And we're talking about raising $120,000. That's what you usually get from a kettle drive? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Yep. I never knew how much the yep. percentage was. Yeah. And that's only one tenth percent of the whole budget. So that's, that's a big, 
and we lose that one tenth, that's a big loss. Well, I, I would imagine with the kettle drive, and you can sort of uh, look at that from what you get. I mean, yep. it's those dollars. I, I mean, you're not getting, I mean, you are getting some, but it's, yep. it's not the bulk money that you're talking about. It's, it's those dollar, two dollar, five dollar bills that Absolutely. are adding up, correct? The, the biggest challenge is that there's not a lot of change going into our kettle seat as well. You know, yeah. change adds up. Yeah. People are saying, well, I replace the change with the dollar bill. But in the past, they might have given five dollars worth of change, right? Instead of a dollar, right? And so if you add all that change together, we the buckets were heavy because of the change. I did, yeah, I don't even think of that because and now the buckets are very light because it's all paper, right? Majority of it is paper. The coin shortage, I guess yep. people have talked about that, and so I mean, I didn't even think that that does impact you directly. Yeah, but one hundred twenty thousand—that's that is a huge. And you said you started earlier this year too. We started on time. Yeah, we started um, November 15th. Okay. And um, we're right now $10,000 down on the kettles. That's a big, that's a big amount. Is it? Yeah, to be down on. The one thing, you know, obviously there's, you get a lot of attention during this time of year, but again, you are... We I mean, service it, it, people all In July, long. the need is still there. Yep. Need knows no season. Right. No. Right now, look at the fires in New Bedford. How many fires have occurred since last Thanksgiving? Not this Thanksgiving, but the year yeah. before. Until this time, there's a lot of fires going on, and the Salvation Army is part of that uh, service team. We, um, when the, there's a fire that happens, we're there with them, those clients, and we make sure that they are able to recover. You know, and so that costs money. You know, hotels are not cheap. Right. And, I, and that's a, this is a good time to segue into. I, I don't know if people know all, and we don't have enough time, obviously, to talk about all you provide. Yep. But it's not just food, and it's not just. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that the organization does provide for. We provide uh, crisis management. Uh, if you're caught in a fire again, like I was talking about fire disasters, we are able to be there and help them out. I'll put them in shelter. Um, not shelter housing, some type of housing. Make sure that they are able to hook up with a counselor or we provide the counseling so that they can get back on their feet. So we have a, a program in our place called Emotional Spiritual Care that will help them do that. Or if that's not enough, we will connect them with a professional. While that's happening and they're looking for a place, we will help them out temporarily until that place is found, mm -hmm. um, up to 30 days. You know, right? And that, and as long as they do their part, we do our part, right? You now, if they they just are staying there for the free housing, and then they're gonna be end up back in the streets, no work done. That's gonna be tough. But if they're making their efforts to f find a look a place to uh, sleep, a place to live, with and uh, see their counselor, we'll we'll be there to help them out because we need to stretch that dollar. You know, you have a lot of kid programs too. We do, and. Uh, some of our kids' programs are online right now, and some of our, them are on site. So we try to balance that out. We try to support them. Some kids don't want to come into the building at this point, or the parents don't want them coming in the building because they're tired, tired wearing the mask. You know, the COVID has affected them. By the time they get home from school, they're exhausted. Yeah, tell us a little about some of the pro the kid programs. Yeah, I mean, we you do have a, after school programs. We we have a uh, once a week youth program on Wednesday night on Zoom. And then we have a music program on Sundays. We moved our music program to Sundays because kids were getting worn out during the week. And I think, you know, uh, from your standpoint too, as we were talking, you, you mentioned last year um, when we were talking about these programs and that um, your staff, at the, it was hard because you weren't having the one-on-one -on -one contact yeah. like you used to have. Has that changed? Are you, are you more one-on-one -on -one than you were last year? Last year we were on Zoom predominantly in right, Zoom. Yep. Now that we have our music program, we have more contact with the kids. And, they, and you must see the results of that too. Absolutely. They're improving. They're right. getting better because they have that human contact other besides being in school. The one thing I think I don't think people realize too is that you guys are um, not just providing uh, financial support, but you were kind of alluding to too, you do provide the emotional support, the spiritual support too. Yep. And there is money, in a sense, tied to that because you need the people to, to help you with that. Absolutely. Talk Absolutely. a little bit about from what you've seen emotionally. I mean, you touched on it briefly, 
uh, that people are tired. But what have you seen over the past 12 months from your position? I s recently, we had a client that is um, were in physical abuse situation. And they came to us for help. And to see, after receiving help, to see them in tears because somebody was willing to listen to them. Are you seeing more uh, emotional support issues than you previously? Yes, absolutely. Ha so have you been able to, do you have, I guess, the staffing to handle it? My uh, staff are all trained in emotional spiritual care. Yeah. And that, um, so when they see a need, they can pull them aside and talk with them and say, what's going on? How's it going? What's, what's, what's the situation? What can we do for you? So they're very conscious about the need of the individual. They're not just saying, let me take your name and number. Right. So we have a team right now from Coastline. That's the senior employment program. Right. But they are the ones who are taking the applications for us. We are on, on the side ready to handle the deeper emotional needs, the spiritual needs. And the other thing too is that it does wear on your staff. Yes. Um, because I would imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's been no break for you guys. No. So how, as, as for lack of a better word, a manager, how are you dealing with that when it comes to your staff? Because you're dealing with people in their toughest moments. I have to watch my staff and see if they need a break. I, I would imagine you need, a, yeah, a I, person I mean, does need one, I would imagine. They, they do. Like we, we closed uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We opened late on Monday and Tuesday for uh, signups so that people could sign up late at night. But I knew my, my staff was getting tired and, they, and I, I saw it in their faces. And I had to say, you know what, Wednesday, stay home. Take the break, you need one. We also provide uh, debriefing sessions where they'll come in and uh, we'll just sit down and, and talk and, and they will share with us what's going on. And you know, I have to put being the boss aside Right. And being their pastor, because we're, you know, we are a church. I was just, well, we're going to yeah. get to that too. I mean, you have the spiritual end, but you also have the, and again, yep. the manager end. Yep. But so you're, you're playing two roles. I'm playing two roles. So I have to be able to put one hat aside and put where the other hat at any given moment. Right. And that's, that's hard to do, <laughs> you know? And I, I caught myself one day saying, they were coming to me and saying, I need help emotionally. And I'm like, did you do this? Did you Wait a minute. Right. And I had to go back and say, let's talk. Have, have you been able to, has there been, for lack of a better word, training sessions for them? Have you had to help them out um, throughout the course of the year, your staff I'm talking about? To, are there new techniques or anything to help them? Um, we try, I mean, if there's a change, I take the time to train them one-on-one -on -one if yeah. possible to make sure they are learning the ropes correctly and that they're doing putting the proper procedures in place. Yeah. It, w it was a great segue into the spirituality uh, aspect because yeah. really at its core, that's what you do. Yep. And, um, you know, you see right now that, and I'm generalizing, church attendance yep. is not where it was pre-pandemic. No. no. How important do you think um, there are people still going? There are some uh, churches still on Zoom or, yeah. or, or, you know. How spiritually has this pandemic, what has it done spiritually to people? I think people are realizing their mortality. You know, they're, they're realizing that they're vulnerable and that, that they need to seek someone greater than themselves. You know, and that, and that greater person, I believe, is Jesus Christ. Because as a pastor, as a Christian, I believe that you need to have that relationship with Jesus. And, uh, and um, so people are seeking that, and people are seeking the church. And I'm um, looking and saying, you know what, I can't do this by myself. I, I need help. I need to someone to talk to. Can you help me? Is there a concern when you hear, and again, I'm generalizing all religions, that yeah. attendance is not where it is. A concern from you that you think, you know, how do we get people to come back at, the, at a time when you would think that they would need some spiritual guidance or just help? There is and there isn't. Okay. I don't know how to put that. <laughs> um, I think the ones who are more serious about their spirituality 
are seeking it. Mm -hmm. Those who are not as serious about their spirituality are staying away. So it allows those who are more serious about their spirituality an opportunity to be more vocal of their needs. You know, if you're in a crowded room, sometimes you, you stay quiet. Right. But if you're in a smaller room of less people, you might share a little more. Mm -hmm. And so it's giving those people an opportunity to share a little more so that they can work on that need. So, And it, it, it may be great. Just, I, I mean, again, I know people are concerned even just going to church, yep. um, masks and things like that. It's not, for some people, they say it's not the same. It's not the same. Trying to sing with the mask on, it's not fun. Right. You know. Smelling your bad breath <laughs> while you're singing. Yeah. It's not fun. <laughs> um, what's the thing that uh, I'm curious uh, after, and again, I, I, I think I asked you this question last yeah. time, but w what's the thing you've been most proudest of over the past 12 months or so since we last talked? I think I'm most proudest of my team. I'm proud of the people who have stepped up to be part of that team. There were people who weren't part of the team before the pandemic, and they have joined our team because of the pandemic and they have really given themselves to the work that needs to be done. And they recognize, not just to, that I think they've shown a lot of care. They're not looking at you as a number, but they're looking at you, how can we help you, your soul, your spirit, you know, and your emotional needs and your concerns. And that they wanna be there for that. And, um, and so that to help people through that struggle and that battle, and so, we have a fantastic team. We have fantastic volunteers, fantastic workers. Um, I, and I, I'm, I'm so blessed to have each one of them that w uh, we work alongside. There's nothing in your life experience that could probably train you for what you've had to deal with for the last 22 months. Yep. Um, uh, are there things that as you look right now, um, again, this is, it's, it's, it's new for you. Are there things that you want, would like to change right now, uh, the way your the business is being done in a sense, or, or ch you know, things that you have changed it, like, oh, well, even if there wasn't a pandemic, this is a good way of doing things. I think it helps us to look at every program we have. You know, more, more in depth. And more in depth. Yeah. And to get rid of what's remote, like, that don't no, need to be there. No, it's a good thing, yeah. Yeah, and it helps us to get rid of those things and say, Let's let's work on the things that work. Right. <laughs> let's let's focus on these things that make a difference, and we have done that, and um, and we recognize what n works and what doesn't work, and where it need where it needs to be fixed, and how can we improve, where we need to step back. Is it know? more simplifying, really, when you're looking at it? I mean, when you're getting down to not just your organization, but when you look at it, it it's kind of like getting just down to the core of what you're really meant to be doing. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. Um, sort of the frivolous things now that yep. you were it's, doing it's before. Gone. It's like you said, you've looked and said, this is our mission. And yep. this is what we've got to take care of. Yep. We've only got a couple minutes left. But I want to give people a chance to, um, obviously, we talked at the start of the show. There's a great need for help in yes. the community and I know that you've always praised the New Bedford community since you've been here that they've always responded to a crisis and, and this is an issue. How can people help? What are you looking for? We're looking for volunteers. Volunteers to man the kettles. Uh, we are looking for people to donate at the kettles. Uh, we are now, um, you can donate without putting actual cash. You can do it on credit card, you could do it on Vimo, PayPal, you could do it on, on, on that help. But we're just, the more you can support us, even with toys, um, it's hard to order them in mass. It's easier for individuals to bring a couple toys here and there to shop for those things and bring it down. Uh, coats, um, there's still, we're looking at another 600 families to go. Wow. So um, we still need more toys, we need, still need more coats. Um, it's hard to shop for those things um, as a, in bulk, it's easier to shop that shop for them a uh, little at a time. So if you're going to buy a coat for your daughter, pick up another coat. If you're buying a toy for your kids, pick up a couple more and bring it down to the Salvation Army. For people who don't know where you are, by the way, give them your address too. We are at 619 Purchase Street in New Bedford, uh, Mass.
and you can't miss it. People who have questions, how can they get in touch with you? Um, I know that you guys have a great contact information. Our number is 508-997-6561, or you can just email me at michael.jung, J-U-N-G, at U-S-E, that's United States East, dot And, um, you know, the checks can be made out, obviously, to the Salvation Army. To the Salvation Army. And if you want to make the checks out to the Nevis Family Fund, you can. Just put in the memo, or you can make it out for kettles. That's fine, too. Or if you want to just give a general donation, that's welcome as well. I want to give you a last word here. You're an optimistic person. Yeah. How, how are you feeling about this holiday season? And then going in, I mean, it's been 22 months. Um, but again, you're one of the people I look at like, you're one of those optimistic people that the glass is always half full. Yep. How well, are you feeling looking going ahead here? We're going to meet our goal. We're going to make it. You've, you've always said that, though. We're going to make it. I believe we're going to make it. Yeah. Um, hope marches on. That's the theme of the Salvation Army right now. Hope marches on. And I believe that hope still marches on. And I, I believe we will make our goal uh, because we have great community. This community has great people. And so... As long as the people do their part, we'll make it. And you're feeling good going into next year as well. I do. I do. People have stepped up and they, they are going to step up. It might take them a little bit of uh, convince, a little bit of uh, encouraging, but I know that the community will come through. Well, it's great seeing you again. Again, Thank you. you do. You guys do great work. Thank and you. And you shouldn't uh, shouldn't be uh, you should be proud of that. And Thank again, you your so staff much. does great stuff. Thank you. That is Major Michael Jung from the Salvation Army of Greater New Bedford. I'm Jim Marshall, the New Bedford Cable Network. Again, please donate if you have any resources that you can. We'll put up the information again for you to get in touch with them. My thanks for you for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.